RC racing can be one of the most exciting areas within the radio controlled hobby, but for a first time racer, hitting that track for the very first time can be a bit intimidating. And it's sometimes it's hard to know what you need and what to have and how to prepare. So in this video, we're gonna go over some tips for the first time racer of what to do and how to better prepare yourself so you have a more relaxed, fun and enjoyable experience. As with any area of life, the best thing that you can do to achieve your desired outcome is to be prepared and to do as much due diligence as you can for whatever situation that may arise. RC racing is no different and for the first time RC racer, there's a lot of things that you can do to help prepare yourself for when you first hit that track. Now, if your local track is in your area, go to the event. Just go check it out for a little bit. You can even just walk around through the pits. People are usually really friendly. You can talk to people and tell them you're interested in racing and they'd probably love to chat with you. You can also go to your local hobby shop. They may put the event on or they may not, but they have information on the event. So you can talk to them about the event, the scheduling, the times, how much it costs, if there are any requirements. You also wanna find out what tires work really well at that particular track. You also wanna find out what race classes that track provides and see where you'll fall into that. There's usually a novice or a rookie class for people that are just beginning, but you wanna find out how your car stacks up or if there's anything that your model needs, like maybe a stock motor to race in the stock class or however your local track does it, you'll just wanna ask questions about that. It's also good to find out if that local track has an on-site hobby shop so you can buy some spare parts if you break apart at the track. That way you've got them right there readily available for you to purchase. And if there is an on-site hobby shop, find out if they stock parts for your particular model or brand of car. It's also good to find out if the track has any other requirements, like if you'll need a chair or a little pit table to set up. Sometimes outdoor tracks, you'll need to bring an extension cord with you in a power strip. Sometimes indoor tracks have a requirement that you need to have a pit mat laid out or a lipo sack in order to charge your batteries. You probably already have some of these items anyways, but when you go to the track, you're gonna wanna bring some really basic things with you, like a few tools. You're gonna also wanna bring things like spare body clips, uh, some wheel nuts, maybe some screws, and then if there isn't an on-site hobby shop or maybe they don't even have the parts for your model, bring some spare parts. Things like front suspension arms, uh, front shock towers, maybe the front C-hubs, um, axle pins, things like this are really to have at the track. I've seen people just scramble looking for really basic things right before their race, like body clips. You can always just get these really inexpensively and have a few on you or close by. Your attire is also something you're gonna wanna prepare for. If it's an outdoor track, bring things like a hat, sunscreen, plenty of water, and it's also important to wear closed end shoes. Like don't wear flip flops or sandals because it's just sometimes dangerous. People can get hurt. Your feet can get run over by an RC car. Who knows what can happen? It's just better to stay protected than put yourself at risk. Now the night before the race, it's a really good idea too to charge up any batteries you have. Now there's probably some batteries in your transmitter that are double A's, but if you have a rechargeable LiPo in there, charge it up, make sure that's fully charged before the race day. If you're racing nitro, you're also gonna have probably a receiver battery, a glow igniter battery, maybe an engine heater battery, and a starter box battery. You can have any of those. I'd charge them all up, make sure they're 100% before you hit the track. If you're racing an electric vehicle, charge up a battery before the race day. That way you're ready to go and hit the track so you can do some practicing. Otherwise you're gonna get there early, have to set up and then have to charge a battery. Sometimes there's delays. So it's best to just, just to have a battery ready to go to hit the track. So those are all really good things to do ahead of time. But once the big day comes and it's track day and you probably didn't sleep all that good, do what you can to get up early and get to the track early so that way you can get set up and just be prepared. It's a lot less stressful if you can get set up in advance. That way it's you're more comfortable, you're gonna be more at ease, and you're gonna be more ready to go and react to whatever is happening at the track. It'll also be really good to find out who's putting the race on, whoever the race director is. That way you can go to that person, ask him or her questions, and you may even wanna ask who that person's helpers are so you can ask them for help if you need it. 
At some point in the morning, the track will officially open up for practice. It's just free practice. There's no race going on. Just drive at your own pace. Now it's really important as a new RC racer to watch where the other drivers are putting their car on the track. One of the biggest mistakes that new racers make when hitting the track is they'll put their car down right in the straightaway and then walk up to the driver's stand where you stand and operate your car. It's really important to never put your RC car down on the straightaway. It happens a lot that somebody else driving on that track is gonna come down that straightaway full speed and is gonna hit right into your car that's just sitting there and both cars are probably gonna break. The other driver is gonna get mad and it ends up being not a good experience. It's really important when you're gonna go practice to put your car down on the track somewhere safe and out of the way where no one else who's currently driving is going to hit it. If you're racing at a nitro race, they often have a pit lane. You'll wanna find out where that pit lane is, have somebody help you out if needed, and then put your car down in that safe zone. At some point, the practice is going to officially close and the race director is gonna hold a driver's meeting where he brings all the racers together and they have like a powwow and they talk about how the race is gonna go down, the format, maybe a schedule with times. Now the driver's meeting is something that's really important. You wanna find out what time that's going to happen. You can ask the race director earlier in the morning what time the driver's meeting is, but you don't wanna miss it. You wanna pay attention to everything that's said in that driver's meeting meeting and it might even be a good idea to bring um, a pad and a pen and just jot down some notes. You can whip out your phone if you're close enough and record a video so you can re-watch it later and hear everything that was said, but you, you don't want to miss that driver's meeting. And if for some reason you haven't actually signed up to race and paid for your race entry, you're gonna need to do that. Somebody who's helping put on the event has probably have gone around with a clipboard, taking money, writing down your name and what class you're gonna be racing in. It's really important if you wanna race to actually sign up. Soon after the driver's meeting has finished, the official time sheets or race sheets are gonna be posted somewhere on a, a bulletin board or a, taped up on the wall. This is going to list the order of the qualifiers, the races that are gonna happen, and then wh who, what drivers are in what race. And then each person will be assigned a number. And that number is going to correspond to the number that your car is going to be. It's going to determine where your car is gonna line up in that qualifier. And if you need to borrow a transmitter, the little device that records how many times you go around the track and your times, if you're gonna to need to borrow a transponder, you're gonna to need to get the transponder that corresponds to your number because the, trans uh, the transponders are usually numbered as well. So it's important to find out not only what number you are, but which heat you start in. So the races could have 10 different heats in that first round. So the race director will say races start at 10 o'clock and then every qualifier is X amount of minutes. So you can roughly keep track of when your qualifier is going to be. That's really important. You're also gonna to wanna to get the stickers that correspond to your car number and then put those stickers on your car. And you're gonna also wanna grab the transponder that corresponds to your number right before your race, the race before yours. Now to mount that transponder, sometimes they require an extra body clip and you'll have to pop it through your Lexan body. So you may need to take a body reamer to pop a hole maybe three eighths inches in size and then push it through your body in that hole and clip it with a body clip. These are all things that you're gonna wanna find out in advance and make sure that you have that hole in your body popped. Now, if you end up in the very first qualifier, you're gonna need to have have your car ready and your battery charged. If you're not, you'll have some time to wait around. You can watch the races, watch how the format happens, and it's also good to just inspect your car at this time. It's good to check for things like loose wheel nuts or any other loose screws on the car. You can also check for leaky shocks. Maybe flip the car over and check all the screws on the underside of the chassis. Make sure that everything seems tight, nothing is rattly, there's no plastic parts that are broken. 
you want your car to be ready to go. And this is really important because you don't want to be late for your race. If you aren't there for the start of your race, they may go without you and then you've kind of lost out. Let's say you're in race number four. You want your car ready by race number three. And in fact, you want to make sure you put that transponder in your car and then you go get in line to get up to the driver's stand. Usually there's a line somewhere where everybody lines up if they're in the next race. You want to make sure that you're all prepared and ready to go and in that line waiting. Now once it's finally your turn to get up on that driver's stand and do your first race, a couple of things to keep in mind are that the race isn't won in the first turn. Normally, if there's a little bit of a pile up in the first turn, those guys may have started first, but now they end up last because a turn marshal isn't gonna go out jumping out in front of other oncoming cars to flip those cars over. He's gonna wait for everybody else to go by and, and once it's safe, then go flip over those crash cars. So the best thing you can do on your very first race when you're nervous and sometimes your hands are shaky and you feel a little jittery is just drive at your own pace. Just do what feels comfortable for you. The idea is you're out there to have fun, so you don't need to be ultra competitive. I always like to say, when I go to the track, I don't race other people. My goal is only to race myself and try to better my own lap times. It's really easy to get caught up on the racetrack when you're just so excited and your adrenaline is pumping, you just really wanna push it and be champion of the track. But the best thing to do is just take a deep breath, just get comfortable. If there are faster guys coming up behind you, just let them pass. You don't need to hold them up. Don't try to block them, and especially don't try to hit them. It's often just to hold your line. A real skilled driver will find his way around you. If there is a nice turn that you can pull to the outside, do it, let him take that inside line. But it's important not to hold up faster drivers. That first race is for you to have fun. It's not for you to walk away after your very first race being the world champion of RC racing. On the racetrack, slow and steady is fast. Sometimes driving slower to make sure your tires stay right side down and you're not on your lid will be faster in the end. And sometimes a track will have really big jumps that are difficult for new racers. Sometimes it's just faster to roll over them rather than trying to jump and clear over the big jump if it's a double or a big triple or something like that. Just rolling them can be really advantageous. In racing, the most important thing is just not crashing. So if you can drive slow and not crash, you're gonna be way ahead. Now, once your race is finished, you're gonna to wanna to turn your transmitter off, turn your car off, and then put it in the impound if there is one at the track. That's where they just stage all the cars afterwards because everybody who was just in your race now needs to turn marshal for everybody in the next race. Sometimes the turn marshal spots are designated by the driver number, so you'll wanna find that spot that corresponds to your car number. So get out there, be prompt, don't take your time because you don't want to hold up the race and you want to be an alert turn marshal. It's really important not to spend any time looking or looking away or talking to buddies or being on your cell phone. That's just really disrespectful for the people who are racing because when it's your turn to race and you flip over, one of the worst things that can have happened is a turn marshal who isn't paying attention but standing right there next to your car. But nevertheless, you really want to put a lot of attention into turn marshalling for the other cars that may flip and also to be safe for yourself. Sometimes you may need to stand near a jump where cars are flying through the air. You don't want to be running out in front of flying cars. If you're near a straightaway, you don't want to be running in front of any cars that are coming at you. You want to wait for them to come and go and then proceed to get that flipped car when it's safe. You only run after a flipped car when it's safe for you. This is especially important when you get into eighth scale racing where the cars are bigger and heavier and can do a lot of damage if they hit you. When you're turn marshalling, it's also really important that when you grab the car, you point it in the right direction. 
Sometimes it happens that you get so excited and you grab a car and you might put it down right into the pipe or maybe backwards on the track. I've seen guys even grab the car in such a rush that when they throw it back down on the ground, they throw it down upside down. You don't wanna cost that driver more time than he already cost himself. So just pay attention and be alert and put that car pointed in the right direction. Sometimes when a car flips, it flips completely out of its lane. So again, going back to paying attention, you wanna put the car back in the correct lane that it came out of. This seems kind of like a lot of tips, but if you're new in RC racing, it's just better be prepared. Better to read all the literature you can, watch all the YouTube videos you can, hear all the testimonials from your buddies you can. The better you're prepared, the better off you'll be and the better time you'll have at the track. One of the most important things for a new, new RC racer when they hit the track for the first time is to just not have any race expectations. If you go out there thinking you're gonna be the champion and you're gonna win your race, and uh, sometimes that's just not the reality. You just wanna go out there with the mindset of gaining an experience, learning new things, and essentially just kind of honing in on your craft because RC racing is like any other skill set. It doesn't just happen overnight. The guys who are at the peak of this sport practice, 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 and have been doing so for years. So just go out there on your first race with the mindset of having a good time with your friends and family, learning new things and making new friends. The skills on the track will come over time. Just with practice, you'll get faster on the track, learning how to better set up your car, learning new techniques and driving strategies. It just comes with time. That's why on your very first race, you shouldn't worry about any of it. And lastly, it's really important to be respectful to the other racers, whether it's in the pit lane, on the track, standing next to guys on the driver's stand. So it's just important to just be respectful. And ultimately, most racers just wanna leave having had a good time on the track and with their buddies and looking forward to the next race coming down the road. If you guys are still watching by now, hit that subscribe button so you catch our future videos and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. For you guys that are new watching this, if you have any questions on racing or RC cars or anything else, you can leave that for us down below in the comment box. And if you're an experienced RC racer that's somehow watching this video, let us know down below what I missed. I'm sure there's a lot of useful tips that maybe you have that you can share with any new racers that may be watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was useful to anybody looking to get into RC racing for the first time. I'm Brett with A Main Hobbies. Thanks for watching.